Justin Trudeau had some comments to say about the Indian media, and now they are tearing him to shreds. It's really kind of comical to watch. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. As everybody is aware, Justin Trudeau is trying to pick a fight with India so that he can try to rile up some of the base and so that he can try to get Canadians to forget that there are 25 people living to a basement apartment, that food is out of price, out of reach, that the housing market is out of reach. What houses there is, there's a shortage and it's overpriced. That the infrastructure in Canada is terrible. We have the highest cell phone rates in the world. They, you know, the list of things, the green slush fund that they embezzled, the list of, of, of scandals and things that Justin Trudeau is hoping that this uh, row, row with India will make people forget is just too long and too plentiful. However, the Indian media took offense to some of the things that Justin Trudeau had said. And because they, uh, they don't have the girder that the government puts on them, they were <laughs> able to speak back to him directly. And this one, this one is hilarious. This one uh, post from, from the outfit called first post. I, um, I, you know, I, I shortened it down, but it, it, she burns him like really well. And uh, I just thought you would all enjoy watching it. Say what you want about Justin Trudeau, but you cannot deny one thing. He believes in freedoms like the freedom of expression or freedom of press. Unless, of course, you're Indian press, in which case you're branded fake news. Let me show you a report by the Canadian government. It was published last month. It accuses Indian media of meddling in Canadian politics. And First Post has also been named in this report by the Canadian government. We've been accused of peddling fake narratives, of spreading disinformation about Canada, some Indian outlets have more than 10 million YouTube subscribers. Canada's low subscriber numbers in comparison suggest a distinct advantage for Indian media. Is that a compliment or a complaint? Canada says Indian media outlets have more followers. As a result, we have an advantage. Well, congratulations, I guess. You have figured out maths and technology. But let's take a closer look at these so-called narratives. Apparently, Indian coverage portrayed Canadian diplomats in an unsavory light. Well, how unfortunate for them. Does any of this sound familiar to you? This is exactly what happened to Indian diplomats in Canada. Trudeau did not seem to mind that, but he opposes unsavory depictions of his own diplomats. Let's move to complaint number two. Indian media showed Niger as an unsavory individual. Well, first of all, someone get these guys a thesaurus. And secondly, unsavory is charitable. We have called him a terrorist and a separatist. So get your facts right. Targeting of new Democrat leader Jagmeet Singh. Let me quote again. Many Indian media posts claim Jagmeet Singh is pro-Khalistani and is culpable of terrorism himself. These narratives present Singh as the reason for Prime Minister Trudeau's ruination. Again, just to be clear, we are not claiming Jagmeet Singh is a Khalistani. He is a Khalistani. I know Trudeau doesn't trust Indian media, so here's a Canadian report from 2018. It says Jagmeet Singh attended Khalistani rallies, rallies where violence against India was celebrated. Also, just some advice for your staff. Maybe stop counting our views and subscribers on YouTube. Instead, try finding that promised evidence. That is, of course, if it even exists. <laughs> what a burn. Oh, that was so funny. I mean, that was... I, w I was really... Um, I think I, I was relieved to see that somewhere in the world there is still democracy. I mean, you can say whatever you want about India, but their press, did you see the number of them standing outside, the, the amount of them standing outside the uh, the embassy in Canada when she, the, up against the fences there? And clearly they're not having to pass their uh, um, reports through uh, government censorship. Unlike Canada where we have, you know, Global and CBC and CTV and all of the rest of them that have to get the permission of their handlers in the Liberal Caucus. The Marxists would never allow this kind of stuff to be said about Justin Trudeau. Though I don't see any of it that isn't true. I mean, he put those words out in the report 
And they do seem to be talking about the fact that Indian media has more followers, it's more subscribers. Well, I'll tell you something, Mr. Trudeau, if you weren't so, if you had not turned the media in Canada into a far left extremist Marxism um, propaganda arm of the liberal NDP government, you probably would find that more people would be listening to them. But what happens isn't that they're, you know, people were listening to them. Then you change the way that they talk. And people said, wait a minute, none of this makes any sense. None of this adds up. I don't agree. So rather than throw a fit or put out some sort of mean tweet, they simply found what they were looking for somewhere else. Now, I know that's difficult for you to understand because in your mind, everybody will have to follow where you lead. Unfortunately, you can see that they think for themselves and, uh, you know, all the power to them, right? This Indian media clearly doesn't have to worry about what they say. They can clearly say whatever they, they feel like. I didn't see anything that wasn't anything but funny. I mean, that was all for pretty comedic. It's well documented that Jagmeet Singh has been run up and down, especially the United States of America, and gone to lots of pro Kalistani um, rallies, as they call them. So I don't know. I don't know about um, whether or not you think that it's it's uh, uh, some sort of war, propaganda war that they're going to win out on YouTube. I don't believe that in a minute. I don't believe India is going to notice you at all. I think that now that you've expelled the um, ambassadors and the high commissioner, they're going to ignore you. They're just going to forget that you exist. There are plenty of people in the world. India is, by all accounts, the fastest growing economy on earth. It's even rivaling the United States for uh, production. Ford is open there. They've moved a lot of the uh, chipsets from Taiwan to India. They have, they're the third largest arm dealer. So they're making a lot of cash and they're not really worried about you and they can buy their coal from Russia. They can buy their, cause Canada's number one export to India is coal, um, dried beans and some other petroleum products that they can grab elsewhere. I mean, I get that maybe they probably have to worry about the beans, but as yet the trade barriers have not been enacted. So they're just going to mock you for talking like a Marxist who worries about whether or not the propaganda machine is, is going to paint them in a bad light rather than look at the fact that we are just destroyed the diplomacy with an entire country. And who do we, who are we sending in there to fix it? Are, are we trying to fix it at all? Or are we just going to run around at the foreign inquiry and try to cast shade on conservatives for not agreeing necessarily with the diplomatic stance of the federal government? Is that, what we're doing is that how we're solving this problem. I mean, you just lost all of these people and you haven't lifted a finger. You haven't made a single phone call. Would they even accept your phone call? This is a good question. I don't know the answer to it, but it seems a bit strained the relationship. And I think that the Indian media doesn't take you seriously at all. And I don't blame them. You, you act like a, uh, well, you act like you're, you, you act, you behave in a very immature manner when it comes to diplomacy. And as Canadians now are learning, when you start to talk about foreign influence, we have to take it all very seriously. Now I'm going to do a separate video on that because I have some opinions. Now I'm going to wrap. I want to thank you all for listening. I'll talk to you next time.